welcome to the Frugal Technology Show. Now, this is a show that's devoted to small business computing. We talk about technology that's you know good, maybe not so good, what makes you money, what saves you money. And uh, this week I want to start off the show and talk about what could be a very, very good value for your small business. And it's called Windows Home Server. Now, I know the name, Home Server, but listen... For small companies, and I'm talking under 10 users, and maybe have you know, three, four, five people, something like that. Products like Microsoft Small Business Server or Microsoft Windows Server may be overkill for you. Um, if you're looking for a, a server product, get that first server, and you need things like file sharing, print sharing, um, maybe remote access, then uh, it's an incredible value. Uh, it showed up in my Microsoft Action Pack, and that DVD just sort of languished there for a good long time. And here about a week ago, I had an old computer that I said, what the hey, let's, let's try putting that on. And I did, and i got to tell you, it's a remarkable product. Well, let me show you with you some of, the, some of the things about Windows Home Server and why it might be good for your business. Uh, originally, Microsoft designed this product for uh, home users in mind. Um, uh, as I said, up to 10 users, uh, or up to 10 computers, I should say. Now, it does feature things like what's called media sharing, file, print sharing, uh, backup, remote backup of your uh, computers to the server, and uh, remote access through the web. Uh, and it works very, very nicely. Uh, so that's just kind of, you can definitely take advantage of that. You can add users it's for work groups. There is no active directory integration to deal with. It is strictly a work group, standalone type little server. Now this operating system sells between $110 to $150. You can buy pre-made, uh, pre-built servers. The HP MediaSmart uh, server comes to mind. Uh, very nice machine, but... It actually, the hardware requirements are very minimal for this thing. It's designed to run headless and without peripherals. Uh, and basically what you do is once the server is up and running, is you install a client that will run on either XP or Vista that you can re a remote console to this server. And it's very, very easy to use. It basically uses the remote desktop protocol, RDP. And uh, it's a, they put a very easy to use graphical user interface on this. So you can back up your laptops, your desktops to this thing remotely. That's how you're supposed to access it. But yes, you can definitely get into it. And essentially, it's Windows 2000, it's, uh, it's Windows Server 2003 R2 with a very easy to use interface. And a lot of the oily bits of the operating system are hidden from view. Uh, you can definitely use it for business, there's no doubt about it. In fact, you can even run applications like Microsoft SharePoint services on there. Uh, what you can't really do with this thing, of course, is create a Active Directory. Uh, server class products such as uh, Microsoft Exchange won't work on it, but there may be other email server uh, solutions that will run on it. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server, I've, I've looked, I don't believe that it will run the uh, uh, on there. However, the SQL Server Express will run fine. So this is a great product for up to about 10, uh, as I said, 10 computers. Now look, it's very, very easy to install. It was brain dead simple to set this thing up. It did take quite a while uh, on this particular machine, but it's a very underpowered machine, so that's probably not fair. But it took about an hour, uh, maybe a little over an hour and a half, somewhere in that range, uh, and then even longer once it started grabbing updates. But it features an interesting technology that I like called Drive Extender. And what Drive Extender does, it is a file-based replication system and it provides three different key capabilities. One is a multi-disk redundancy so that if any given disk fails, uh, all data is not lost. Kind of like RAID in a way. Uh, arbitrary uh, storage expansion by supporting any type of hard disk drive, whether it's serial ATA, USB, FireWire, whatever and in any mixture and in any capacity. So it's kind of similar in concept was called BOD. Um, there is a, um, uh, it's, it's, definitely a, it's definitely a very, very good, good system. Now also you won't see the hard drive, uh, hard drive space in there. That's hidden from there. 
you just uh, basically see folders. So it's very, very simple to use. There's very little IT administration to it. It's going to be an excellent little first server for a lot of companies. What it does lack, okay, the server itself doesn't have a built-in backup mechanism in case of a catastrophic failure. I want to point that out to you. Uh, it cannot join a domain. Um, it is not designed for that. It is a work group server operating system. However, if you have a domain, such as we do here at Frugal Brothers, uh, even when you browse networks, you can see the shared folders on the on this server. Now, we use it here internally as a media server. We keep videos, music, photos, all that sort of stuff on it. Uh, we don't really use it for file and print sharing services so much. Uh, it works great, by the way, with the Xbox 360 as a media, uh, not as a media extender, but as a media connector. So that's kind of cool. So for those real small offices, you got a small little business, you want to, you step up from peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, but you know the budget's a killer. You know you don't want to spend five, six hundred bucks for an operating system, 110 to 150 bucks an old computer or just a bare minimum machine will make you a nice little starter server. Check it out. It's called Windows Home Server. Uh, really powerful for what it is. Very inexpensive. You can do an awful lot with this thing. Highly, highly recommended. I'm Bruce Naylor, your Frugal Tech. Remember, if it's in your office, not making any money or saving money, get it out of there. Hey, if you like these videos, make sure to leave a comment with us. And also, do us a favor, join the community and subscribe to the Frugal Tech channel. Bruce Naylor, I'll talk to you later.